I think the community needs to know that it's not really all about climate change. The forests have not been cared for. That this whole business about uh, stay or go is ludicrous. You have to go. That we can no longer fight these fires. That all those people who, head of the CFA, and all those people who were indirectly responsible for the loss of all those lives, they should be fired. But we know that the same thing is in place. We cannot live in this, these kinds of environments anymore unless we take care of them. That means, sorry for the heavy, heavy greenies, that means burning. We have to burn, we have to do mosaic burning. And it has to be done all the time. Uh, the places like these, you won't be able to sell it, but uh, people will suddenly realize that you can't live in a bush. The bush doesn't want us. Uh, Marysville was quite obviously a place I was going to go. And it's shocking to think that all the technology that we had, that that fire could have been stopped, as could have the fire of Cockatoo. And the same reasons for the fire of Cockatoo that had started in South Belgrave was this battle between whose domain it was, whose territory it was. Uh, and this is what happened. That, that fire went from Kilmore. And they were still fighting about where it was going to go and how far it was going to go. So and there's something wrong with the infrastructure, but there's something terribly wrong about the way the Green Movement has taken over councils. I mean, I have been in some meetings where the most extraordinary rubbish has been spouted as excuse for not doing anything. Talking about, oh, we can't burn that because it's a corridor for the wildlife. Excuse me, tell that to the Eastern Greys who hop across the field. Are you telling me that if we burn that particular corridor, the wombats will never use it again? You know, what will happen if we don't is the wombats will die because a hot fire kills everything. Cold fire doesn't. Uh, and I just think it's, it's very depressing. And I, and I, th I don't think it's about climate change mainly. It's about the way we have not managed our forests. Who do you think are the people who will change first? Given that, given that oh, I think the, I think the community will change. Uh, I, I think the community will start breaking council rules, and it's already started. Uh, people will be putting in bunkers. They haven't said bunkers have always been illegal. Burning off. I've been trying to get this property burned if it's been here, but I can't do it without a few hands, and I can't do it without a fire truck. And they don't want to. Mm. They don't want to help. It's not difficult. Wouldn't have been difficult just to. I mean, this place when we arrived here. I mean, a fire went through there in the '60s, and you know, a fire is where a lot of, particularly the hakias, they sprout. And we came through here. All the hakias that had sprouted in the '65 had all all died together, and we pulled them all out and burnt them. But it's time another fire went through. But technically. Uh, on this property because it, uh, we, we were actually going to give it to the t Trust for Nature, which meant technically they wasn't allowed to pick up a twig, uh, certainly not allowed to burn, uh, which is insane. And, and who's to say, you know, what is the pristine natural state here? We all know the Aboriginals burnt and burnt and burnt long before we arrived here. And uh, they looked after the forests. There were no hot fires, there were just fires that were burnt. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, while, while governments call the shots and while people like Brumby still protect their mates who may, and that uh, Russell Rees, that person who was head of the CFA, he was a Brumby appointee. So Brumby's going to defend him to the death, to the detriment of the communities who need protection and they need it now. Things need to change now. But the same infrastructure is in place. But I think the people will start to do what they know has to be done. Do you think there's a place for the arts in that transition? Oh, I mean, there's always a place uh, for the truth, there's always a place for a mirror of what's happened. It's only there where the truth happens. I mean, it's only, it's only the artists who get away with saying the way things are. I mean, although this, this latest episode of this 
know, the, the Chinese embassy calling in that uh, film did only, but they they didn't manage to succeed. But it's only it, it, it's it's only artists who are able to say things that politicians and a lot of writers even don't say. Yes, I think there's a tremendous place for the arts, and this is what makes me resent the fact that we don't really have a film industry anymore. We're kind of an attachment to America. That we're not, when we lose what we are, and all we are is, you know, mirror of what works in America. Terrible films about terrible murders and uh, teenage sex, which interests me not at all. And, but there are so many stories to be told about the Australian character and the Australian and the Australian environment which are not told. Uh, and when we lose uh, that aspect of our own art, we lose our own culture. And I think that I fear that's what's happening. Our language is changing. Mm. Even mm. I don't understand what young people are saying anymore. I need subtitles. They speak in some kind of American jargon that I don't understand. They're lazy. They don't love their language. This is my thing as an actor. I love the language, and the language is the expressive thing. But you hear American actors who will create a dramatic, dramatic atmosphere with their voices, shoving it down off the vocal cords, but they forget the words, which are far more potent than anything that they can do. And uh, I just see the world changing around me so much, in so many ways, that we are losing our identity. You look back at uh, newsreels of the Australian 50 years ago, how he spoke, how he was. He was full of energy, articulate, had consonants. Not anymore. I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> and they're not saying anything. People who are too lazy to even finish a sentence or know, you know how a sentence is constructed.